In September of 2022, some punk on the internet decided to leak several sets of developer footage for Grand Theft Auto 6, the next entry in Take 2's Marquee series. The game is still a long, long way from releasing. So the footage featured early alpha gameplay. Little to no textures, models and animations were in their early stages. Naturally, this prompted gamers who are notoriously chill and cool to say stuff like, and this infamous tweet from a self-professed scholar of game development. What's funny about this is I've never seen so many people willfully walk up to be self-owned for their own lack of knowledge on a subject. But then it hit me. Most people probably don't know the first thing about how video games are made. For decades, we've had behind the scenes features on DVDs and Blu-rays depicting the way movies and television shows are crafted. From casting and scripting to choreography and visual effects, every part of the movie making process has been seen at some level. But what about video games? I mean, we rarely get a real peek behind the curtain of these colossal undertakings that hundreds or even thousands of talented people pour their blood, sweat, tears, and blood into. So naturally, I'm here to fix this egregious error on behalf of the gaming industry. You're welcome. Now, where to start though? Because I myself am no expert. I'm not a game developer, which means it's time to bring in the real developers. Naughty Dog, Infinity Ward, Ubisoft, or Ubisoft if you want to get nasty about it, and Sony Santa Monica. I reached out to them all and got no response. Oh. Or was flat out rejected. But that didn't mean I was done here, and I'm certainly not done trying. Indie game developers have never let me down ever. So we reached out and boom, here is the man himself, Eric Grossman, art director of Homestead Arcana. I'm Eric Grossman. I'm the art director here at Serenity Forge, and the game uh, I'm working on is called Homestead Arcana. In Homestead Arcana, players will become a farming witch, and they'll pioneer the range that has been overcome by this mysterious force called the Miasma. And so the game is sort of equal parts uh, gardening, um, sort of magical adventure, and also sort of a um, uh, a sort of delve into the the mysterious unknown. Uh, that is sort of our, our, our unique game world. Now that we have our expert, let's break down the process of game development into easy to understand parts. Game development consists of three phases, pre-production, production, and post-production. They encompass a large number of tasks and a lot of jobs across the studio. Yeah, so in, in games there's generally, and, and this will look different, the, the specifics will look different for every, uh, for every for every project, kind of depending on the team comp and the approach of the studio and their priorities going in. Um, but I can kind of give you an insight for how we think about it um, here at Serenity Forge. So uh, pretty much, but but one of the constants is you do have three phases of development. So you have pre-production, uh, production, and then post-production. Um, and I think that is something that does kind of map onto how people think about film and television as well to some extent. Today, we're just gonna focus on pre-production. In, in pre-production, you'll tend to start off with a good idea of what the goals of the game are, whether that's just like kind of the gameplay core or the aesthetic core, the thematic core. And pre-production is really designed to flesh out all the, all the pieces of that in a way that will set you up to actually make the game. So in pre-production, you'll do things like you'll prototype uh, game systems to make sure the game is fun. It's really important to, to do that early. Uh, you'll do art tests to lock in the style. Uh, this will be sort of uh, in art that is not in the game. So like what we call concept art. So a lot of uh, high level paintings, uh, mood boards uh, are a really useful tool where you, you know, go on Pinterest or tool of your choice and you find all the things that you ins that inspire you and feel like they fit. And then you work that into your own visual vocabulary to, you know, to, to a larger extent. Like Eric said, this is where games start to take their early shape. Characters are being art tested, environments are being concepted, and the story beats are being planned out. Um, you do a lot of production planning, so you'll figure out, like once within the course of pre-production, once you get those basics nailed down, you'll start planning out how you'll actually tackle the content of the game. So you'll plan out like what all the game spaces are, you'll plan out what all the systems really are, how the player will progress through them. Um, and really like sort of get your ducks in a row as far as like being able to look at a document we call the game design document or GDD and say and be able to ha have someone read through that and say okay I know what this game is going to be front to back like there aren't going to be any surprises. 
As pre-production comes to an end, the game's basics like general concepts and story are in the works now. Now it's time to start building that world in the game engine, creating assets and starting the full-blown production process. Join me next week for a look at the meatiest part of the game development, production, where the gameplay and worlds start to really find footing. And be sure to give this video a like over on YouTube if you enjoyed it, and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our episodes, especially the next one, which is the part two to this. You're already here, you might as well like it, you might as well subscribe, and uh, you know, tell your friends about us. But until next time, for Hardwired, I'm Andrew Hamilton.